Hey, good day everybody, this is Joe. Hey, I just recently returned from vacation to San Antonio, Texas, and while I went on vacation, I not only took a typewriter with me, but I took some Lumen cameras. In particular, I took the uh, Lumen Box camera by Jorge Otero, along with a couple packets of paper negatives, and I also took his other Lumen Box, the kit one made from folded paper. And I actually only had an opportunity to use this camera once. It has a curved film plane. The paper is curved in the back of the camera. And I made a single exposure pre-wetted uh, paper negative, the Lumen print, and uh, I was pretty happy with the results of that image, but I wanted to share the results with my larger audience while I was on vacation. And of course, it is a negative image. So the challenge presents itself. If you're on the road, so to speak, away from home, and you need to do a uh, an inversion of a of a negative uh, image, let's say either a lumen print or a conventional paper negative, how can you manage to do that without some kind of special software? That's what we're going to talk about today. Well, my regular way or conventional way of inverting uh, negative images was I would scan the negative images, usually on my flatbed scanner. And when I had my old desktop PC with an old version of Photoshop, I would do the inversion of the tones in Photoshop. There was actually an, uh, a um, feature in there you could go image adjust invert, and it would just invert it po a negative to positive. When I got my Mac Mini last year, I don't have a copy of Photoshop anymore, so I have used several other ways of doing it. One of the ways you can do it in the Mac operating system is if you preview the, the picture and the preview mode, and then if you open up the image for editing in the preview mode, and you can swap the uh, little cursors on the histogram, it'll actually swap the tones uh, negative to positive, but it doesn't do a very good job. It's, it really looks really bad and it is poor dynamic range, etc. Uh, the other way I've done it is with one of these Panasonic Lumix cameras. Um, I'm using the Silky Pix raw development software and I have the paid version of that software and in that paid version it gives you a better way to do inversions of negative images. But again, that's only on my um, Mac Mini, which is a, not a mobile computer. So when I'm on the road, uh, I generally take with me an iOS device, typically this little iPod Touch. So it's like an iPad, but it's a little bit smaller than an iPhone, and it has a 16 by 9 screen. That's what I'm taking with me. So there are some third-party photo apps you can get on the App Store that promise to do inversions. Some of them are paid, some of them are free. Um, there's no free lunch, however, and however, in the native uh, photos app on the iOS, there's no real way to do directly to do inversions, but I did find out a way to do inversions on the iOS operating system. So I first found this when I was on vacation in San Antonio, so let's cut to that footage. So there's various fancy ways you can use to uh, invert a uh, a paper negative and if you obviously are home and have access to a flatbed scanner and a full-blown version of Photoshop on your computer you could pretty easily do it but I'm mobile on the road and really my entire photo studio right now when I'm on the road is a little iOS device an iPod touch and so what I did is I first of all took a digital photograph uh, using the camera on the I on the iPod touch in the HDR mode I took a photograph of the paper negative itself now this paper that I'm using in this Lumen camera is uh, glossy paper, so there is some glare on the paper. This little horizontal streak along underneath the awning of the door, that's just reflections of light uh, from here in the uh, tiny house. But it just illustrates in, in principle how to do it. So there are some photo apps you can buy on the App Store for iOS that promise to do inversions, but there's a way you can do it in iOS on an iPhone, an iPod, iPad, without having to buy an app or download an app. And that is, you go to your settings, and under settings, if you go back to general settings, okay? So general settings. And under the general settings, go to accessibility. And under accessibility, go to display accommodations. And you will see a tab that says invert colors. And you want to click on that tab. 
And if you click on it, you'll be there'll be two other tabs. One of them is Classic Invert, and the top one is Smart Invert. And you want to use the Smart Invert. So I'm going to click on Smart Invert. Smart Invert will invert all the graphics, but keep photographs non-inverted. So let's now go to my photo gallery. This is the same negative image that I just showed you all ago, and it is still uh, the normal way it was, which is a photograph of a paper negative, so it's still a negative image. But now if I take a screen capture of that image, so a screen capture on an iOS device, you hold down the power button and then click the home, home button. Hold down the power, click the home button. You can make a screen grab of the screen. And when you do that, you're actually going to be capturing this image as a screen grab in this mode, which is non-inverted in the inversion <laughs> accessibility mode, if that makes any sense. So when you go back, after you've done that, if you go back to your, your settings and you turn off the inversion now, okay? Now, let's go to our photos. So again, this is the, we're in the non-inverted mode. That is my paper negative that I shot with the camera. And this is the screen capture that's now been inverted back to, it's a copy of the inverted image of a paper negative, which is now positive. Now look at this. The sky is, and the trees are kind of bluish green. The tiny house is kind of pinkish, salmon-y, grayish kind of color. That's not the actual color of the tiny house. But it's interesting how those colors kind of look lifelike in the lumen process, even though the color changes that happen to the paper negative don't really reflect the color of the subject itself. It's more about the silver halides and how they're being turned different shades of color based on their exposure to mainly UV light. So that's a little example of how we can get an inverted positive image of a paper and lumen uh, print and then now that it's on my iOS device I can actually uh, upload it to my Flickr, I can put it on social media, Instagram, I can put it in a video, a YouTube video, whatever. Really convenient way to deal with lumen prints while you're on the road is just an iOS device like this. So that is one handy way to invert something like a lumen print when you're out on the road away from home. But even with something like a conventionally chemically developed paper negative at home, even if you have access to a desktop computer or whatever, your main computing system, uh, you might not have a good software app to do these tonal inversions. So you might find that this iOS method of inverting the screen tones and taking a screen grab might actually be handy for you even at home. So let's try it. Let's try taking a photograph of this paper negative with my iOS device and then I'll show you how again how we invert it. Okay so what I'm typically doing is I'm going to lay down my paper negative onto a plate of metal. I have a couple little strip magnets, these little flexible magnets. It just helps me to keep it flat. These uh, photo paper negatives do have a curl to them. So you want some even light. Um, I could turn on my desk lamp, but it's going to be kind of uneven glare. So I have some light coming in from the window. So let me log on to my iOS device. And I'm going to go to the camera. And I want to go to the HDR mode which is right there, and I'm going to frame up. So um, if you get really close like this, you're going to probably cast a shadow of your hand and your camera. So it, it, you can do the pinch zoom method and just zoom in a little bit. You do lose some resolution, but if you pinch zoom in just a little bit and then make sure you focus on the image and also make sure it's squared up so you're not keystoning uh, the image too badly. Let's see how good that is. There is my image. It looks pretty good. Let me zoom in. Sharp enough for our purposes. Okay, so let me show you how I go about editing and doing this photo. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hit edit. And first of all, I'm going to rotate it. And now I want to crop it in on the borders so I don't have any of all the other stuff. And then if you want to, you can adjust the tones, but I'm going to save that until we do the screen capture. I'm just going to say done on that. 
Okay, I'm going to go and set up my inversion mode. So if you go to general and you go to accessibility and you go to display accommodations and hit invert colors and you want to select smart invert and what smart invert does it inverts the graphics but not the photographs. So now let's go back to our photo gallery and select this photo that we just edited and let's get full screen and now I'm going to do a screen grab and it's going to be press and holding the power button while pressing and releasing the home key. So hold that and go like that and what it just did is if you go now I have this image and what I want to do is I want to go back to my settings and turn off my smart invert mode. So now if I go back to my photo roll I have a paper negative and now this is the positive of the same picture. Isn't that cool? Now I can go ahead and choose to do some more tonal adjustments to this if before I want to share it online. Like for instance, I could go up to the edit mode, go to the this little dial symbol here, the third one, and select light and do the brilliance and just drag up the brilliance slightly. And then I want to do the same to the shadows. Raise the shadows slightly. Oh, not too bad. But so the shadows underneath the bottom of the crow are a little bit better. Let's just say that. So there are some limitations to this. Obviously, the resolution of a screen grab off an iOS device is not going to be as big as the resolution of a full-blown image. You know, if you're scanning it, your photo, your paper negatives on a flatbed scanner or using a high-resolution digital SLR, to digitize them, you're going to have a lot more resolution. But for the purposes of internet level quality, like on Flickr, Instagram, Facebook, your blog, this is a really convenient way to do it. And as long as you have an, a mobile iOS device with you, you can do this anywhere on vacation, on the road, or whatever. Really convenient way of doing tonal inversions and tonal adjustments to negatives, paper negative images. Well, I hope this was. Oh, useful for you guys. Hope you guys put this to use. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave them in the comments below. And until next time, have yourselves a great day.